Hey YouTube, this is MindTech. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you the ultimate wireless camera solution that is 100% free, 100% open source, and requires you to install no software at all. It is incredibly easy to use and it is called OBS Ninja. It allows you to do a bunch of things, but in today's video I'm going to specifically focus on how it allows you to capture any camera device including iPads, iPhones, Android devices. So without any further ado, let's begin. I'm going to go and pop on over to my web browser and I'm going to go to obs.ninja and then that gives you some different options at the top. We're going to be focusing on add your camera to obs and create a reusable invite link. The first one allows you to get a quick and easy solution up and running. The second option allows you to basically set up a permanent device so let's say you're always going to be using your phone or your iPad as your webcam. So first I'm going to click on add a camera to obs and you have to give this website permission. It is an open source site, at least in my experience, it has been safe and secure. It's also a peer-to-peer -peer connection, meaning that it is not going out to an external server. It's only going between your computer and your phone. Now, as you can see, it has my camera input here. You can change the source to your front camera or your back camera and you can also change your input source. This is really for computers. Really just leave it at the default settings for audio if you're using a mobile device. You can also add a password to secure it. I'm just going to leave that as default and then click on the start button. What's important here is the link that it provides right up at the top. This is what you have to add into OBS to capture your camera. In order to use this as a webcam, you are going to have to make sure that you use OBS as an intermediate program. So let's say you wanna use it in Zoom, I'm going to show you how to use OBS to get this camera into Zoom. The way that you do that is you're going to have to go into OBS and then in the sources panel, click on the plus and add in a browser source. And then in the URL, that's where you're going to have to enter this link. So it always starts with obs.ninja slash and then a question mark. And then here we're going to enter in view and then this unique link. And then down here where it says width and height, I recommend you set this to 1920 by 1080 or whatever for your phone's native resolution for the camera is. I'm also going to click on set custom frame rate and I'm going to bump this up to 60. That doesn't guarantee that it's going to be 60 FPS, but that just allows it to be up to 60 FPS. And then I'm also going to allow it to control audio via OBS. This allows you to lower the level of your microphone directly in OBS. Now I'm going to click on OK. It begins to initialize a webcam and now that's it. That's all we had to do to set it up. I can go and manipulate the video capture on the website. So I can focus in on my microphone just by tapping on the microphone. It is very low latency. As you can see, I'm just moving it around in real time and it is updating directly on the capture. You can add in different filters with the audio input of that browser. So I can change the levels, so on and so forth. Now you might be like, oh God, it's not low latency. It's lagging a lot. That's probably because both your device and your computer are on a wireless connection. So I highly recommend that you wire your computer up first of all, and also make sure that your device is connected to a five gigahertz Wi-Fi connection. It might be kind of grainy. Right now, I don't know of any way to change the kilobits per second, but if you look up at the top of this website, it'll tell you how many kilobits your iPad is pushing out to your computer. If this is low, that's probably also because you have a weak internet connection, and you might wanna look into either again, switching to a five gigahertz connection or updating your router. Also in this website, there's a gear icon where you can change the video source to the front camera. One thing that I recommend you change here is to turn off echo cancellation. That'll just make it so that you're getting basically the original audio out of your phone or your iPad. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to plug this into something like Zoom, Teams, or any other webcam application you might want to use. So first of all, go up to help and then go to check for updates. If it says no updates are available, that means that you should be able to use this feature. Now what you need to do is go down to the controls and press the start virtual camera button. And what this is going to do is it's going to pump all of the output of OBS into a camera app, just like a webcam would be. But really this is all controlled through software instead of through hardware. So you need to go into the app that you wanna use the webcam with. In this case, I'm going to be using Zoom. You're going to have to go into the settings where you can configure what 
webcam you're using. So I'm going to click on new meeting and then I'm going to go down to the arrow next to the stop video icon and I'm going to select OBS virtual camera. And as you can see now, whenever I move the iPad, that camera feed is captured directly into Zoom. This might seem a bit complicated, but first of all, again, this is completely free. So you're getting an experience like you would with something like Epicam without having to pay that money. Also, what this allows you to do is you can manipulate things in OBS while you are using the webcam. So if I go into the sources in OBS, right click on that browser that I named and then go to filters, I can add in effect filters such as chroma key, color correction, so on and so forth. So you can do things like add in a green screen capture directly into OBS without having to use an intermediate software like the green screen features that Team and Zoom offer. You can just set that up in one place. I'm going to add in the color correction for this, increase the saturation just to make my colors pop more and also increase the contrast. And now if you compare the raw feed coming from my iPad and then going into Zoom, it is marginally improved. One thing you can also do is you can add some backups here. So let's say you have to go to the bathroom and you don't wanna have to try to search for the turn camera off button in Teams, Zoom, so on and so forth. If you go to the scenes option in OBS, you can set this up just like you're doing a regular live stream. So you can set this up to go to a blank screen and you can also set something up where you can have a little message and then you can assign that scene to a hotkey just by going into settings, hotkeys, and then going to the camera scene, you can make that control one. And then going to the BRB scene, you can make that control two. Right now it's capturing my video. Then if I really have to go really quickly, all I have to do is press that hotkey. And now it's going to show going to the bathroom without any video. So that can be kind of a safety guard. And it's something that you can easily switch between without having to mess with any interface options. So one downside of only sharing your camera is that the link is not going to be reusable. Whenever you go to reshare your camera, it's going to generate a new link. So right now I had to close off of my iPad and as you can see, it no longer has the link here and there is no video in OBS. So that is why you more than likely want to create a reusable link. The easiest way to do that is to do that right on the computer that you're going to be capturing your camera with. So I'm in Chrome and I'm going to click on create a reusable invite link and then you can give the source a name that's going to be unique to the device that you're using. And then here, I only suggest that you click on enable stereo in pro audio. If you click on unlock video bitrate, that's going to force it to do 20 megabits per second. So if you're on something that only uses Wi-Fi, let's say, that might create a lag experience. And then here for video resolution, I recommend that you set it to the maximum resolution. That's going to make it so that it will always try to push your native resolution of the device that you're you're using. And then other than that, I'm just going to use the default settings for now and then click on generate and invite link. And this is going to provide two links for you. One that you need to enter in on the device that you're going to be capturing and then one that you need to enter into OBS. It gives you a nice QR code and that will bring you right to the browser. I just go and scan that in the camera app. And then now I'm going to go and just click on this link to copy the link to my clipboard and then go into OBS. And I'm going to just modify the source that we added in earlier and replace it with that new link. Now, if I share my camera, just like we did before, now it's working just like it did before. And what I recommend you do with this is save the URL link. So I'm actually going to add that link to my home screen. And now it provides a little link to that website there. Once you exit out of the browser, that's going to automatically stop the video, but as long as I click on that link again, and then click on share my camera. Once I click start again, it will reinitialize the feed. You might have to refresh it though, but yep, once I refreshed it, now it has reinitialized that feed. So now the final thing that I'm going to show you is what I believe the big advantage of using OBS Ninja is. If you're using something like Epicam, it only allows you to use one device on Windows PCs and it forces you to upgrade to a $20 package for Macs if you want to use more than one device. But with OBS Ninja, it's not a hardware device. So it isn't using the same addresses in the kernel to connect to OBS. You can just capture any other link and put as many OBS Ninja links as you want to and they do not impose any restrictions on how many devices you use. So to demo that I'm going to pull open another iPad. I'm going to click on add my camera to OBS, do the same spiel that we did before. And now as long as I go and add in another browser source it's not going to use the same link again because the links are 
unique. Once I add that source into OBS, now I have both cameras enabled. I can have my face cam and my back camera, and just to prove that both of these are on OBS Ninja, you can see the link on this first iPad, and you can also see the link on the second iPad. One other big limitation with Epicam was that if you had two computers on the network running at the same time, Epicam would automatically connect to the one that had the strongest connection. Whereas with OBS Ninja, all you have to do is make sure you're using the right link, and it just works. This is honestly going to revolutionize my workflow. And this is the big reason why I think OBS Ninja is completely superior and also worth it to go through those few more steps to get it working with software like Zoom. Also compared to Ebicam, it does not stop. With OBS Ninja, it will automatically reduce the bitrate of the connection. And I'd honestly prefer that over having something be desynced from my microphone when I'm live streaming. That could be an incredibly annoying situation. So thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye bye.